Hello, everyone. I am Marcia Jones and welcome to the I Found a Lump Now What webinar. I do appreciate all of you taking your time to join me for this. Um, personally, I think that it's really awesome information and um, it's what I am very passionate about and want to help share with you uh, because we are entering a new era of cancer care, um, a new, new era of healthcare, actually. Um, because the statistics are are rising um, and we are going to be seeing more and more of these hormone related cancers. One in three women are going to develop a cancer. So I think this is valuable information that, that I need to cover with you. And I, I really think that it's going to be helpful for a lot of you. Um, not just for yourselves, but for maybe someone that you know, to help to pick apart a lot of information. I'm going to go through a lot of things. I'm going to try to keep it um, as simple as possible. I do tend to talk a lot because I get carried away because I am so passionate about this, um, but I'm going to do my best. So like I said, I am Marsha Jones and I am a nurse practitioner. I am certified uh, with the Institute of Functional Medicine. Um, the um, functional medicine is is fabulous. It's, I believe, my calling. I have practiced traditional healthcare, conventional healthcare for many, many years, and I uh, started as a nurse a long time ago, and I've went up the all the way up the ladder. I actually started as a nursing assistant, and um, now I am 20-some years into this nurse practitioner thing, and uh, functional medicine certification, I got that a few years ago. And it's the way healthcare should be done. I, I just, I can remember sitting in my very first uh, course with them and thinking, why, why isn't this the way we're taught from the beginning? Why is it I had to, you know, practice for 20 some years and come back and do this on my own as an additional um, bit of study? But here and there, I was meant to be there. Um, it, it is a calling. It is the way I believe healthcare should be done. Uh, functional medicine treats the whole whole person. Functional medicine looks for that root cause. And uh, we're kind of open to everything. Um, it's not against conventional medicine at all, but it's focused more on, you know, lifestyle and supplement and exercise and, you know, finding that that glitch, so to speak, and, and from a biochemistry type of standpoint, fix it. Instead of just piling on pills and covering up symptoms, we're actually fixing what's going on. But you can't fix something that you don't know what it is. Um, it isn't just that screening for, you know, whatever is the latest thing to screen for and giving you a pill for it. Um, I, I'm kind of lost my my love of traditional medicine in a lot of ways because that's what it's about is the insurance companies telling us what we're supposed to do for people and everything they think is so black and white, but it's not. You're a person. Every one of us has a different background, different exposures, different histories, different different things that make us unique and who we are. And so all of that has to be taken into account. And I believe that every person should be listened to um, and have a role in their own health care. So I've always believed that and I've always practiced that way. And then lo and behold comes functional medicine to put the evidence-based medicine behind that and look at things from a totally different perspective to fine tune. So that is a little bit about me, um, where I come from, uh, what I've got going on. I have done hormone management for over a decade, um, but I, I've learned and developed and, and expanded on that. And I have seen a trend happening over the years. And so now I focus, uh, my, I have a hormone focused functional medicine clinic online. It's MarciaJonesMP.com. But that's went from just a hormone-focused functional medicine clinic to a hormone-focused cancer care clinic because I have been watching the trends as I have been doing hormone management for all these years. And I'm seeing people who have their hormones out of balance from some practitioners who probably mean well, um, but don't have all the information and maybe imbalance things to the wrong side. It's increasing the risk for cancers, but also just a lot of the things that are going on in our world right now that we live in that are increasing our risk for cancer and our exposures that more and more women are developing cancer. So uh, we also don't have the tools for that. We don't have enough oncologists for that. We don't have enough providers who are trained in hormone-focused cancer care or cancer care at all, to, to be honest. Um, and as we're shifting 
from heart disease being the number one cause of death to cancer being the number one cause of death, there is a huge need for education. So this is my contribution to that is giving you the education. And if you decide to work with me, that would be fantastic. Um, but that's not what this is about. This is not a push. This is not a sell. This is literally I'm giving you information and I'm telling you where to find me if you feel that I can be of some kind of benefit to you and help you in your journey. But I have been inspired by this wonderful woman um, I want to tell you about. Her name is Sandy. Sandy passed away within this past year. Um, Sandy was a wonderful woman. I mean, a true inspiration to anyone and everyone. And anyone who met her just instantly loved her. You just would gravitate towards her. Sandy was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer, at uh, one point in her life when she had young, two young children. And... Um, she went through the conventional treatment and she was told that her cancer was cured. She continued to go to her annual follow-ups like she was supposed to with her, um, her oncologist. And she said they didn't do scans every year. They would just talk to her and tell her, you know, you're doing great. See you next year. Well, she had gotten a naturopath in, in between those years. And you know, her naturopath was drawing blood and taking a look at things and said, uh, you know, Sandy, I think that we may have some concern about your cancer coming back. We, I need you to go see your oncologist and, and have them, you know, check things out. Maybe, you know, do a scan, do a mammogram, um, you know, whatever, do a PET scan, something. I, I just think you need to be seen. So she goes to her oncologist who dismissed her because she had been told this by her, her naturopath, thinking that they did not, since they were not conventional medicine, they did not know what they're talking about and told her she was cured. But Sandy does not give up did not give up. Sandy kept pushing and um, she went back to her naturopath, repeated the labs and was told again, no, I think you need to see your oncologist. Finally, the oncologist agreed. Okay, whatever you want it. We'll, we'll do it. Um, did the scans and said, Sandy, I'm so sorry. Your breast cancer has recurred and it's metastasized to the liver. Um, told her it was stage four and that she was pretty much to go home and, and die. You know, say her goodbyes to her family. There was nothing more they could do. There was no treatment options available. Sandy, oh, nope, not happening. Sandy just knew that it was not her time to die. Sandy was a woman of faith and she shared that faith with anyone and everyone. And she took her faith and she took her, her passion and her zest to help others. And she created a support group for other women with cancer, well, anyone with cancer to, for that matter. Um, she had a faith-based group where they were praying for one another. They would help one another. Um, she would support them. And Sandy in her journeys with the naturopath and then with her, her dealing with the um, conventional oncology department had started to find um, ways around, you know, cancer care, alternative measures. And when I say alternative, I'm not talking ho hokey, crazy kind of stuff. Um, she just knew that there was other options available that she wanted to try. She was going to do anything and everything that she could do to save her life. Uh, she had a family to be there for, and she was not backing down and giving up easy. So again, she started the support group. She was learning this information about cancer care, alternative functional medicine, integrative health care, um, you know, and she was bringing that to other people so that they, they had options also. Um, not just accepting that there was nothing else you can do and knowing that there was more to cancer care than chemo and radiation. So, um, Sandy did not have the money for the treatment that she had found in Mexico. She said, good Lord, if I'm meant to have this treatment and I'm meant to live a little longer, um, then I'll find the money. So she started to go find me page and she raised the money and she was able to go to Mexico, get the treatment and all the follow-up from that point on. And she lived another six magnificently wonderful years filled with energy and vitality. And she did not suffer. So when I say this to you, she found ways, she found treatments that made her thrive her body got better instead of worse. She was healthier. She, you know, had energy. She was continuing to work. She was an accountant. She was doing everything she always did. She was taking care of her girls. Um, you know, life, life was not miserable for six years. She went into remission. She took stage four cancer into remission for six wonderful years. And in that six years, she brought faith and hope and, you know, just gave the gift of, hope I, I can't say anything more than that hope to all of these other women who are suffering 
she gave them support. She gave them things to live for. She, she gave them a lot of times what nobody else in their life did. If they didn't have somebody to listen to them and support them, Sandy would. She was just that kind of woman. She and I met because she was getting some IV vitamin C treatments at um, a clinic that I had that offered that service. And she and I talked about functional medicine. We talked about integrative healthcare. And, you know, it was like we just connected it and hit it off because I love talking about all that stuff. And not everyone's ready to hear it or accept it, but Sandy had already lived it and was living it. And so we got to bounce these things um, back and forth. And so she is my inspiration for expanding my practice into this this online space um, because I have a small practice in West Virginia and uh, you know, functional medicine isn't always well received here. And not just that, but there are a lot of women. There are so many women who need this information, who need this kind of care, who need to know that it isn't the end. Just because you got stage four diagnosis with metastasis doesn't mean it's the end. Doesn't mean you have no hope and it doesn't mean you have no options. And it doesn't mean that you have to suffer. I'm not going to tell you not to follow through with conventional care in any of my lectures. Uh, there is a place for conventional health care. I am not going to tell you that I can cure you. What I'm going to tell you is that I can give you the tools to help you to feel better, to live stronger, and to be in a better place with your cancer treatments, to respond to your cancer treatments better. Um, and, and we'll go through all of these and you'll understand as we go through this lecture, but I am here to give you extra hope. I am here to give you answers. I'm here to give you guidance and to replace any of that fear that I can possibly take away from you um, and any of that anxiety so that I can give you answers and guidance. Because when you hear I have a lump or when you're faced with breast cancer, you you're scared you're in panic mode, your whole world stops. You have to start thinking about your immortality and you have to start thinking about your family and, and then there's financial things. And then there's, you know, are the cancer treatments going to hurt? Am I going to suffer? So many things that go with it. So many things. And then you start reflecting on your life and your, your impact on life and your legacy. And like I said, so many things. And so I hope that I can carry on some of Sandy's legacy and bring this information to women who need it and make a difference in the world of others. Um, so with that, I'm going to, I'm going to carry on with that. I could talk about Sandy for a, a long, long time, but I just wanted to know that there is hope and there was this wonderful woman that started all of this into motion. So hormone related cancers are the number one cause of cancer right now. And the cases are climbing rapidly and they're being diagnosed at younger and younger ages. Uh, we usually started screening mammograms at the age of 40. Um, that should actually be lowered. I think in my opinion, um, there should be a lot of other things that we start to um, manage and look at at younger ages and be aware. If someone thinks that they feel something that's abnormal, uh, don't dismiss them just because of their age, because we are entering a whole new world of healthcare and a whole new world of cancer care. And we have to be aware of this as us as providers. And I do have stuff that I help other providers with, but you as the patient, you as the person need to be aware of these things because only you can advocate for yourself. I can advocate for as many women as possible. And I try to do that and help as best I can, but I can't help everyone and I can't be everywhere. So you must advocate for yourself and you must stand strong for yourself and, and help others where you can also as we talk about the legacy of Sandy. Breast cancer is the number one cause of cancer. It's just, that's where we are. It used to be um, heart disease was the number one cause of death in the United States, and now it's cancer. 90% of cancers are preventable. This is where functional medicine comes in. This is where, you know, that looking for the root cause, looking for the things in your life that may be a little haywire, learning how to balance and manage things can help to prevent you from a lot of, um, stress and drama or trauma and suffering in the future. So we're going to get started on this breast health, lumps of the breast and cancer. Um, finding lumps causes fear and anxiety. We just went over that. Um, you can't help it. It just it, it is what it is because it makes you face life and mortality. And waiting for the test results is like absolute pure freaking torture. It is slow motion. And while you're in that slow motion phase, you're searching for answers. And that's either going to be more confusing or frustrating because you can't find answers or everything is leading down a negative pathway. 
And it's, it's, you know, giving you the worst case scenario. That's not what I want to do. I want to give you hope and I want to give you guidance and I want to give you real information and not send you down just somebody's blog that, you know, decided they, they wanted to share their story because sometimes when you listen to other people's stories, yes, they can be inspirational, but you have to have the backup to go with it. You've got to have the knowledge. You've got to have the data to go with it, to know that it is for real and true, because when we're dealing with hormones, it is not straightforward. Not everybody is the same. There's a lot of things that are similar, but there's a lot of things that are not. So you can't take somebody else's situation and always put it into your own because other people have other factors in their life that you may not know about. Um, and I want to share with you the story of how I can tell you the emotions that, that run through you when you get that diagnosis or when you're fearing that diagnosis and you're waiting for those test results. My darling husband here is us on our wedding day in Jamaica. Um, we have not yet been married for two years and um, we, you know, obviously are older and met each other. And within the first year of our marriage, uh, he started having some symptoms that I didn't like. And so we started to get evaluated and he had some blood tests that suggested he may have multiple myeloma and multiple myeloma has a three year or less survival rate. So of course my world was shattered. And just like everybody else, I'm searching for answers. I mean, I have medical knowledge. Sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not so good uh, because I knew worst case scenario and I wanted answers. I wanted just someone, anyone to tell me the answers. And, you know, it, it wasn't, it's not a hormone type cancer. So it wasn't down my, my area of specialty here. What I, I deal with multiple myeloma is a whole different ball game. And um, there's not very many good treatment options for it, but I wanted to start him on whatever I could as soon as I possibly could. But I also didn't want to mess up any results to a bone marrow biopsy that would give us the, the correct answers. The first appointment we could get at our first trial was six months from the time of his abnormal test results. Well, I wasn't having that. Um, anyone who knows me knows I now I will move heaven and earth for you. I will move heaven and earth for my family. I am going to find answers. I am going to do something if it is at all within my power. So I did pull in every favor I could possibly pull. And I started ordering some exams on my own um, that uh, I, I could at least start to, to give myself some peace of mind uh, and doing my own research. And one of the things the research brought me to was that this could possibly actually be from COVID. Uh, the blood changes could be from COVID. Uh, finally, I did get in, did get him in with a hematologist oncologist, and we found that he felt the same, that it was a post-COVID condition that was causing these changes in his blood cells and not multiple myeloma. But yet the damage to the cells require continuous monitoring for the rest of his life to make sure that he does not turn into a cancer. Um, and that's one of the things we're facing after we've had COVID in our lives and that's for everyone. COVID has changed it for everyone. Whether it's a hormone-related cancer, um, the immune system has been damaged, which allows cancers to, to take over and replicate and tumors to spread faster. So we're de dealing with a whole new era in healthcare and in cancer care. And that's why I'm so passionate about this and trying to help. And I even try to educate other pro providers and practitioners on this because I know what it felt like for me having information and having resources. And the more that I thought about it afterwards, you know, Sandy set things in motion for hormone, hormone care and breast cancer. And the next piece of the puzzle is my husband set more things into, into action because I said, you know, what about the people who don't have the abilities that I have? What about the people who don't know what I know? And the people who don't get to say, Hey, um, can I call the, the gentleman who reads my, x-rays for my practice and see if I can't get a sooner appointment for my husband to get some scans done. Or, you know, what if I can't call and say I'm a provider and I'd really like to see if there's something on the cancellation list so I can get my husband in sooner because this is what I have found and give that really detailed report that's able to move things along faster. I said, what about the people who don't have that ability? That's not fair. And he agreed with me. And so that has set into motion, again, the online and the spread of this um, advocacy I have for 
you know, patient care and this hormone focused cancer care and, and cancer in general, but uh, I'm not going to be dealing with multiple myeloma anytime soon in my practice because hormones is where I specialize. Um, hormones are what I love. I've been doing this for over a decade because what happens with hormone management is it makes women feel amazing. And they feel younger and they get their youth back and their energy back. And at the same time, I'm helping to prevent hormone-related cancers. Um, and now that I've been watching this and tracking where we're going in the world of cancers and in our, our new healthcare era, um, it's only natural for me to start to focus on hormone-related cancers. Um, but it's still about balancing cancer. So anyway, yeah, not going down any of those um, those other types of cancers. You got me here for hormone-related. But I just thought I would share that so that you know that I do know where you're coming from. Um, I do understand and um, I will do what I can for you uh, anytime that I can. Um, I, I want to make a difference. And that's why I do these webinars. I don't have to do this. Um, this is a lot of information and it does take time to put all this stuff together, but it's, it's what I do. It's what I love. And I like to educate people and help people. And if I can give you some of this information and it helps to ease your fears a little bit and I said, give you some guidance and some peace of mind and at least knowledge that you can start to process what's coming at you, then my job has been done. Um, so anyway, lumps of the breast. Let's talk about these. We got cysts. We got fibrous tissue. We have mastitis, blocked ducts, tumors. These are some of the lumps and the bumps of breast. Cysts are simply the fluid-filled sac. Whether you have a cyst on your breast, whether you have a cyst on your leg, um, an abscess somewhere else, they're all the same. A cyst is fluid-filled sac that is like a clear viscous fluid. An abscess is a sac that's filled with infectious fluid. So a mastitis is a type of infection. So it would be a cyst um, that is inflamed and filled with infection. And that's how we treat that as, as an infection. Cysts don't have any tenderness. They're not sore. They're usually just these round little sacs that you can push all over the place if you need to. And usually you don't have a whole lot of them. Um, the mastitis is tender when you touch on them. Usually they're still, you know, circular. You can move them around, but it hurts when you do. Um, and they usually have some redness around them. Uh, fibrous tissue, uh, not quite so round and mobile. It's usually harder, denser, um, kind of like sometimes they're uh, a little more irregular. They're not uh, just that perfect little formed circle. Uh, they don't usually hurt. Uh, you may have some fullness in your breast and tenderness if you have dense breast around parts of your menstrual cycle, but the, the breast, uh, the fibrous tissue itself is not usually painful. Then you have blocked ducts. So if you're breastfeeding, um, if maybe you just, your lymphatic system is clogged up, you can get these clogged ducts that feel like lumps and bumps. And they're usually more around the nipple region. Um, and again, they're not usually painful. They might be a little tender, but not usually. Um, and then we have uh, tumors of the breast. Uh, cancers are not usually painful, not in the beginning. If they have spread and metastasized and your small cells turn into into um, a larger lump that turns into a tumor that turns into the type that can actually damage the tissue, then there may be some pain to that. Um, I've seen I've seen breasts that are quite deformed by the time women are ready to show someone, by the time they have gotten to the acceptance of the fact that there is something wrong and that they need to seek help. Uh, oh, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, if you see something of concern, you, you can't ignore it. You really just can't ignore it. Never assume if you feel the lump, you need to get it checked uh, because your cancer treatment will have a whole different um, pathway if you catch it early than if you wait until your your breast is, is deformed. And I, I've actually seen pieces of breast fall off um, and a lot of drainage and such. So don't wait that long, but if you do still get it checked, okay, there's never and never, I told you about Sandy, they said stage four metastasis to the, to the liver, that woman lived another six wonderful years. So don't delay your treatment and don't think it's too late ever. Once you find the lump, here's what we usually do. We, you go get, go get your appointment to get it checked out. We order mammograms, um, ultrasound biopsy, and I still do some uh, primary care, some brick and mortar kind of office care. So I don't just do all online stuff. So I'm still in the middle of this and still in the middle of diagnostics of things. Um, so we order the mammogram, which is a screening tool. Uh, then we go to an ultrasound if there's something suspicious on the mammogram. 
or if we can make a clear case to the insurance company that we need an ultrasound that, you know, it looks more like a mastitis or that it's one side instead of the other side, then they'll let us go with that ultrasound. Because an ultrasound is a little bit more what we call diagnostic, meaning that we can actually see and, and, and know a little bit more information from it. Uh, biopsy is where we go in um, and take a piece or take some of the fluid and send that off for a pathologist, which is a special kind of doctor um, that looks at these cells under a microscope and stains them and does special things with them to see, is it a cancer? What type of cancer? Or is this fibrous tissue? Is it inflammatory? It can tell you all kinds of things. So that takes a little time. And while that time is happening, to get all that back, to schedule the test and wait for the pathology, you wait. And the waiting is like pure torture. What is normal? So let's talk about that while we're waiting. It's all in the details, okay? Nothing is actually normal except that um, there are different things that happen to our breast over a month, over our menstrual cycle uh, because of hormones. And this is all about hormones. If your hormones are balanced and they're doing the cycles the way they're supposed to, um, you're going to get, your breasts are going to be a little bit more tender during certain times of the month. They're going to feel a little more fuller. You can get lumps and bumps that you feel during certain times of the month that you don't feel during other types of the month. Um, we're going to ask all those questions when you come into the office. Uh, so know about the timing. We're going to ask you about shape and tenderness. These are all the questions to help us uh, to make sure we know what we're dealing with and to diagnose correctly. So with timing, like I said, does the lump change during your cycle? Does it feel like sometimes it's fuller than other times? Um, does it feel like it moves uh, or, you know, does do you have it all the time? Does it come? Does it go? Sorry. Um I lost my train of thought. I'm really sorry about the phone in the background here. Um, so these are the things about the timing that we need to be aware of. And shape, is it round? Is it irregular? Does it move around? And I told you some of that with the different types of lumps we can have while we're asking these questions. Is there one or are there many? Because fibrous dense tissue, there's several. And a cyst, there's usually one. If it's a tumor, usually it's a single tumor. Um, and it will grow over time, not grow and get bigger, smaller, up and down, that kind of thing. So these are the, the pieces of information that are very important to us when you, you come in to be seen by a practitioner. So tenderness, is there pain? A lot of cancers, I told you, don't hurt. You just feel that it's there and something's bothering you. Um, you may even feel some pain back in your in your lymph nodes. Uh, that that would be just a fullness. A lot of times people will say, you know, where is the pain? Do you have pain in your nipple? Do you have pain around the ducts? Do you have pain in one spot? Uh, is it dull? Is it sharp? Is it stabbing? Is it just sore all the time? Is there redness around it? Does it feel warm to touch? All those kind of things help us to, you know, is this, you know, fibrocystic? Is it related to hormonal changes? Is it infectious? It's, it's all important. Some of the myth uh, about breast lumps is that lumps increase your risk of cancer. No, the lump itself does not increase your risk of cancer. And we're going to go into that. Dense breasts are hereditary. The denseness itself is not hereditary. Um, there's a lot of genetics to cancer, but you can change your genetics. And some things about, oh, people say, oh, my grandma had it, my aunts, my this, my that. Well, usually you're exposed to the same types of things in a family. And that's why some may have and some, some things may run in families. And then there's this myth of we don't know why women get these lumps. Um, well, I'm going to enlighten you. And yes, we do know why women will get certain lumps of the breast. Uh, and that's our, our big focus today. The truth about these breast changes. Hormones and inflammation. These are the two things that have to do with the breast changes. These are the things that have to do with all the lumps and the bumps. Hormones. Basic. Hormones are chemical substances that act like messengers. We have over 45 different hormones in the body and every one of them are connected. But we're going to keep it simple. We're going to talk about the primary female hormones related to breast changes and breast cancer. Estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. Estrogen is naturally produced. It's controversial, but it is very essential. We make our own estrogen. Okay, we have to have estrogen. This is the things that make us female. Breast development, the endometrial lining, that's the lining inside of the uterus that prepares our uterus for babies. Um, maintaining vaginal tissue, bone development, bone density, even has some heart health. We need estrogen. 
But when estrogen's gone bad, it's because there's too much estrogen, the wrong type of estrogen, or it's not being processed correctly. So too much estrogen, you can get estrogen in many different ways, which I'm gonna go over. Um, the wrong type of estrogen, there's three different types of estrogen and they go down different pathways in the body. Some of them are bad and uh, can turn into cancer. Others are great and healthy pathways of estrogen. Um, and so you want to make sure that you have the right balance and you have the right type of estrogen that is good and healthy that's causing all that protection against heart disease. It's making our, our mental clarity there, our brain health. It makes our bones strong, um, manages you know all of our energy levels, our libido. That's the way we want it to happen. So we want the right types of estrogens in all the right places. And then the other thing is if it's not processed correctly. So our estrogen goes through our liver um, and then it's put where it needs to go. And, and, and then anything that's excess is eliminated. So elimination is through your bowels. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in here that if you are not eliminating correctly, you are not processing your estrogen, estrogens correctly and you're setting yourself up for too much estrogen. So estrogen exposures and poor metabolism are the primary things that develop the breast changes that lead to breast changes. So when they say we don't know, yes, we do. This is what's happening. This is why the breast has changes. Hormones and inflammation. Um, estrogen imbalance or a dominance means just an excess of estrogen increases your risk for cancer. So the things that can increase estrogen, of course, we have our natural cycles during the month. You have more estrogen than other times of the month. That's why we ask you when your last menstrual cycle was. If you have irregular menstrual cycles, then we're going to figure it out. It's okay. Um, we're going to try to get you regulated. Then we have uh, birth control, which we do birth control, hormone replacement therapies. Those will elevate estrogen. Um, animal products. You may not think about this, but a lot of animals are injected with hormones to make, make them grow bigger so that you get more food uh, when they go to market. And that is how we get those into us when we eat that animal product. Um, adipose, which is fat cells. Um, fat cells make estrogen. I bet you didn't know that. Uh, fat cells, uh, obesity is its own endocrine system now, and it's secreting its own hormones when it has to do with um, uh, hunger and um, inflammation. And th there's a lot we're going to go in. That's going to be another whole class. Uh, alcohol, alcohol goes through the liver. So does estrogen when it's processed. So if you're competing for receptors and you drink too much alcohol, your estrogen is not going to be processed correctly. Then we have these things called xenoestrogens, which uh, once upon a time we'd never heard of. Now um, we're hearing a lot more about it uh, in our personal care products, our home. Uh, so shampoos and makeups, um, plastics, pesticides, cleaning stuff. All these things have toxins in them and chemicals in them that can increase our risk for cancer because they mimic estrogen, meaning that they're almost exactly like estrogens. Then we have progesterone. Um, it is produced by the ovaries and it plays a role too in breast development and uterine activity. So here's the great thing about estrogen and progesterone. They have a direct relationship. So we want to balance them. So if you have so much estrogen, you got to have this much progesterone to go with it so that they, they, they go with each other. If you have more estrogen than progesterone, your breast development is going to be different. You're just, you're going to be growing more breast tissue. That's where some of the lumps and bumps come in because you don't have enough progesterone to put the brakes on that says slow it down. So estrogen is accelerating, progesterone is saying, whoa, slow it down a little bit. If that helps you with understanding that relationship. Um, same with menstrual cycles, um, cysts on the ovaries. It all has to do with that balance of progesterone and estrogen. And um, it, menstrual cycles, I told you the regularity of our menstrual cycles. Endometriosis has a lot to do with that imbalance also. So I told you progesterone, too little progesterone, too much estrogen, breast changes. The testosterone piece. Yes, we have testosterone. Um, we do need some of that because that helps with our bone density, helps with our brain health, helps with our libido, um, our muscle strength. All of these things play a role. If testosterone's out of balance, then we can see PCOS symptoms. Um, but the, the real reason I'm bringing this up with breast health is because testosterone can be aromatized into estrogen. And so what that means simply is testosterone being turned into estrogen. It's a fancy term for saying that. And when that happens, it gets inflamed. And remember I told you hormones and inflammation, those are the things that are causing our breast changes. So these are the hormone imbalances you might recognize, fibrocystic breast, obesity, endometriosis, 
PMS, and PCOS. If you have any of these things going on, you have a hormone imbalance. And I would highly recommend that you seek a consultation with a uh, functional medicine provider that does hormone management. Uh, and I do, again, say hormone uh, or excuse me, functional medicine or integrative because we're trained in a different way. Um, conventional medicine still doesn't believe in some of this or some of the trainings are not complete. I know a lot of people, and I did this myself, I went through a bioidentical um, hormone training program and they were self-serving. So they did not give the whole picture. They only gave what pertained to what they were trying to sell. So it's kind of like you drink the Kool-Aid, right? And then you live and you learn because I was seeing things uh, when I was doing these therapies for people that I was like, no, wait a minute, this isn't right. That doesn't make any sense. Well, why is this happening and that happening? And so me being the nerd that I am, I go and find the answers and I start to realize, okay, there's more to this story. And then when I found functional medicine, I was already fine tuning what I was doing with, with hormone management. Um, but functional medicine just, just blew it over the water. Uh, it's, it, this is how we should all practice. So make sure that you're seeing a functional medicine provider if you want to get your hormones in alignment and you want to help prevent breast cancer or should you have breast cancer that you get hormone-focused cancer care with someone like me. Um, but anyway, that's just a little bit of why. Uh, and here's my big red alert for you is, um, you know, balancing alert is hormone replacement therapy has to be managed very carefully. Bioidentical and natural supplemental rebalancing, it can be done. You can do it with food. You can do it with supplements, um, letting your body do what it's supposed to do naturally. That wonderful body that knows how to do things. We just, like I said, root cause. Functional medicine is finding the root cause. And when you find the root cause and you put the things into place that balance it and correct it, then you're good to go. You don't need a lot of the extra stuff. You feel great and you're going to live longer and you're, you're going to age better. Never get it from a uh, synthetic source. Um, progestins are synthetic. So when people give you um, kind of a lot of flack about hormone replacement, it's because they aren't hearing everything and they don't understand all of it. Uh, like bioidentical creams are good. Um, there are certain certain pills, uh, progesterone, micronized, we can use instead of progestins. That's a whole different, you don't care about that part. Just, you want to know that it's getting bioidentical and natural supplement supplemental forms. So now the inflammation piece. Okay. This is the fuel on the fire. Obesity, stress, lack of sleep, toxins, and processed foods. Every one of these things cause inflammation. They are setting the body on fire. So now you have this perfect storm. You've got extra estrogen. You've got estrogens that don't match. So there's xenoestrogens. And then you add inflammation on it. You've got all this breast tissue changes happening because most people don't have enough progesterone. They've got too much estrogen. So that, that breast tissue is just, it's got all kinds of stuff happening in there. That's where you start to get those fibrocystic breasts. That's where you start getting just the cyst. That's where you start getting breast tissue development where that's why um, breast cancer and breast changes are happening younger and our, our young ladies are developing sooner. It's because of the estrogen that's in our makeup products, our food products, our plastics. Um, we can't get away from it. So what we do is we work to eliminate it correctly and process it correctly. Because if you're going to be taking on all these toxins, which we can't get away from them, and I don't want you to be scared. Um, I want you to know that there's just, you have to balance it. Um, if we can't get away from all of these toxins that we're being filled up with, we have to know how to get rid of them. We have to make our body ready for this. We have to prepare the body and give it the nutrition it needs and all of the things that help it to, to do what it's made to do. Um, we're made to protect ourselves. This is thing called homeostasis. So the body can pull from one place to make another place work. So if it, it just, that's just what the body does. It's fascinating. And I'll try not to go down my nerd talk on that. Um, but you have to address these things, obesity, stress. You've got to get sleep. You've got to get toxins because they are, they're causing the imbalances. They're knocking the hormones out of whack. Um, and then the inflammation is putting the fuel to it. Uh, this is a lot of what we work on in functional medicine. This isn't all of it, but this this is a lot of what we work on in functional medicine. And um, one of the future talks that we're going to have is um, on obesity itself and how managing your hormones and by cancer prevention and cancer focused care, we're actually going to make you lose weight without pills and shots. So it's all going to come full circle because a body imbalance is, you know, 
is fine-tuned. Uh, inflammation, again, like I said, is a major player in fibrocystic changes and in breast cancer. Obesity. I did put some slides in here on obesity because, as I said, it's its own endocrine system. It's secreting estrogen itself. Um, it's aromatizing testosterone into estrogen. It's got this hormone called adiponectin um, that has to do with hunger. Uh, then there's also uh, insulin. It has to, an insulin and in obesity. If you have too much insulin, you have, you're have overweight. It's called this metabolic disorder. We're going to go into that in, in a little bit. Um, but the, the bottom line is obesity is a risk factor for hormone receptor breast positive cancers. It increases your risk of uh, redeveloping a cancer even after you've went through treatment and told you're in remission. And it also reduces your survival rate. Um, women who are overweight and don't implement some of the things that we teach you in, in uh, functional medicine and this hormone-focused cancer care um, may not do so well with, with their treatments. Um, your treatments are less effective. The things that I teach, uh, the things that we work on in our program are being able to balance everything so that your body does better with conventional treatments. I never tell someone not to do conventional treatment. I don't have a problem with conventional treatment. We're going to go through some of the, the things that happen in it. Um, what I think is a is lacking is that synergy that you get with functional medicine because uh, there's a lot of destruction and just its attack with uh, conventional treatments and not looking at the full picture of everything that we can do because they treat and they destroy the cancer. Hallelujah. But um, what, what else do you do? How did you get cancer in the beginning? Uh, you know, what caused that, that cell replication that caused that tumor and how do we keep that from happening again? Um, you know, how do you get your body to process that estrogen better? Those are the things that we work on in functional medicine. Uh, hormone uh, obesity, breast cancer connection, that obesity is an inflammatory condition. The fat cells turn androgens, that's testosterone, into estrogen via aromatization. I already told you what that fancy word meant. And estrogen stimulates breast tissue. So here it is. It's all this vicious cycle. These are our key points. Cyst and fibrous tissue are not cancer. And they do not cause cancer, but are a sign of imbalance. Hormone imbalance is what increases your risk of cancer. And without addressing the root cause of the imbalance that's causing the changes in your breast, you increase your risk of developing cancer. So it isn't the lump that you find. It's the things that cause the lump that increase your risk of cancer. So no matter what type of lump you have in your breast, the changes that got you to that lump, that inflammation, and that hormone imbalance increase your risk of developing cancer. So here we are. We've done our waiting, and that's what we did while we were waiting for our test results. And scenario number one, the biopsy is negative for breast cancer. Hallelujah. Amen, right? But you can't just, whew, that didn't happen, you know, like you dodged a bullet. You need to put an action plan into place because I just told you you're still at risk for developing breast cancer. So how do you change that? Balance your hormones and decrease inflammation. And how are you going to do that? We're well, going to start simple. Um, you're going to avoid the estrogen increasers that we talked about, alcohol, products with xenoestrogens. Um, you're going to be very careful about any hormone replacement. You're going to decrease inflammation by decreasing stress and avoiding processed foods. Um, you're going to get more sleep, which is going to decrease stress and inflammation. You're going to increase activity to move out those estrogens because when you're you're moving, it's moving things along. And I told you, you need to be eliminating. Your bowels need to be moving every single day, soft bowel movements every single day. Then that way we know that the liver is processing the estrogens and eliminating them the way they need to be eliminated. So you're not building up too many. So that's decreasing our hormone and balancing it. And that's decreasing our inflammation because if you just leave that stuff sitting there and you're not going to the bathroom correctly, all of that stuff just keeps going through the system over and over again. It just keeps getting regurgitated through and it's poison to you. And that poison causes inflammation. So you want to make sure you're having regular bowel movements. Choose organic whenever possible. That way you're not getting those pesticides that we know are toxic. You want to increase your cruciferous vegetables and cruciferous vegetables are things like Brussels sprouts and broccoli uh, because they help to um, balance out estrogens and pull out extra estrogens. 
Um, we have good supplements that do that as well, but I don't make any supplement recommendations in these uh, lectures um, because it doesn't require knowing your, your uh, hormone status and knowing a little bit more information about you. And that we do in our intakes uh, with our program. So increasing lean protein and healthy fats because you don't want a lot of carbohydrates because those simple carbohydrates, what they do is they increase your insulin levels and that increases your weight. And so we've already talked about that. Um, increasing fiber helps to decrease inflammation um, and move those estrogens out. So fiber helps your bowels to move better. Plus it binds to estrogens and helps to pull them out and any other types of toxins in your body. So those are some of the things you can really start. Those are the simple steps. Then the next level, I call the next level step because it's not that easy, is weight management. Uh, you want to decrease your weight because as you balance your weight, you balance the hormones, you improve your response to your cancer treatments, um, and you decrease your risk of recurrence of cancer. So um, balancing those hormones uh, can actually make this easier. And that, again, is one of the things we do. So it's hormone-focused cancer care, but in the end, you're getting benefits all the way around because it's all connected. You have to get tested. Um, you have to know your levels. There is a test that I absolutely love. It's the Dutch test. Um, I think it is the gold standard. I think every woman should have this test. Um, it's not done through conventional medicine, conventional labs. This is a special test. You, you really should consider it. Um, I do do a program uh, through um, my web. It, it, consultations are free for that, by the way, but it, to see what fits into your life. But if you just want that test and you don't want a full program of care through your cancer journey or through your hormone balancing, uh, there are tests that we, we can do a consultation. We can order the test, you go over the results of the test, and then you have your information. Um, it's that simple. So just a couple of visits. Um, but you have to know that root cause and everyone is unique. So no two people will have that same test results. Um, and it's just, it's by far the, the gold standard. And I hear it as the Dutch plus, um, it, the blood test will never show you what this test does. And this is urine collection. So you do it at home and you send it back, it tells us about your cortisol. So it can tell me your stress levels. Oh, here we go on this. Um, it can uh, estrogen, testosterone, cortisol, progesterone, melatonin, even. So if you're not sleeping, it can tell me that if your blood sugars are off and your cortisols are off, it can tell me that if you tend to, um, have more androgens in your system, it can tell me that. So both of those things, you know, tell me that it looks like I forgot the T in both testosterone and progesterone. What the heck? Um, but anyway, uh, so this is why I say this is the gold standard test that I believe everyone should have done. And this is how we can balance hormones even without uh, bioidentical hormones in the beginning is by just learning what is off and tweaking sometimes your diet or some supplements. But uh, so scenario number two. All right. So we did number one, which you can do. You got your warning. You know, now you're going to make those changes. You're going to help yourself to not develop into breast cancer. But what happens if we have scenario number two and that biopsy did come back positive for breast cancer? You're not going to believe me, but I'm going to say don't panic. I know, I told you I panic with my husband, but don't panic because there's options. And this is where I thrive, okay? This is where I can tell you your options. I told you multiple myeloma, uh -uh, no, that was not, that's not my field. Um, but there are options when we're talking about hormone-related cancers. There are people who opt to do uh, no traditional uh, treatments. I'm not telling you that. That is not my place to tell you. Uh, some people want to try to cure their cancer, but I'm also going to try to, I'm also going to tell you there's no cure for cancer. Um, and that, that's not trying to make you panic, but as in, you have to be realistic that all the things that cause cancer, which we're going to go into, um, will always be there. There's always a chance of a cell that's going to get mutated. That's going to turn into a tumor if the, if the body can't clear it out. And it's what you do to protect yourself and your body to put every defense possible is what determines your risk for developing a cancer. So you've already got, okay, this is our scenario. You've got cancer. There's a lot more to it than chemo and radiation, but here's the current cancer care model. And again, I mean, no disrespect, none whatsoever, because we need this cancer care model. But what I'm telling you is it's not the only answer. It focuses on destruction. So you get diagnosed, you're going through a whirlwind, okay? The bias results come back, you're getting shipped off to the oncologist, you're getting tests, you're getting like this just, it's, it, you, like your head is spinning from everything that is going on. You're getting told, well, the best thing to do for this is, is uh, radiation. The best thing to do for this is 
chemotherapy or we're going to do it all. And it's just boom, boom, boom. And before you have time to think about it, it's done, right? And you have questions. Well, is this really the right thing? What should I eat? Is there anything I can do to help um, to respond to the treatment better? And that's not really the answers you get. I think there's a lack of cause analysis, meaning uh, looking for that root cause that we talked about. It's more about staging. It's the fact that you have it. What do you, is it a genetic link? What stage are you in? Has it metastasized? Where, what are we going to treat it with? That's not where did it come from, but where is it at? This is what I think is a problem with all of traditional medicine and conventional medicine. Is that last statement about that, you know, we're in the where we are, it's disease management. Lack of nutritional guidance. This is another thing because I just, it fires me up to hear people say um, that you need to have milkshakes, have ice cream, eat whatever you can eat. No, that is not true. And we're going to go into that also. Your body needs fuel. You need to starve out cancer cells while you're fueling your body. There's a lack of emotional support, um, you know, a lack of the consideration for things like uh, this is my life we're talking about. Uh, everything's coming at me so fast. I need time to process this to make a decision. You know, it's just all full speed ahead. But you actually do better with cancer care treatments if you prep your body. So if you know that it's coming, like those things that I just told you to do, even if the biopsy was negative, when you got your warning sign that there's an imbalance, those are the things you can start to do to prepare your body for your treatments. Um, because you cannot do a detoxification once you start chemotherapy, because chemotherapy is a toxin. So you have to be, you know, in a right phase before you start your chemotherapy, because then you can't. Things like intermittent fasting, you have to do that at a certain time around your treatments. Um, so, so many things, that's why I tell you, don't just search the internet, get real factual information from someone who's been trained in it. Because if you only do, if you do intermittent fasting at the wrong time, or you do what we call refeed at the wrong time or the wrong way around your treatments, it's not going to help your treatment. Um, so some of this is going to keep you from getting sick. It's going to make your treatments work better. Anyway, that's, like I said, the holistic approach to all of this, it is, um, it is augmenting your therapy. It, it, it's synergy with regular treatments. Then of course, the lack of complementary therapies, which things like infrared sauna. Um, I don't know that there's a lot of discussion on that in hormone related cancer treatments. It's chemotherapy and radiation. And I get it. They're overwhelmed. They're doing what's in their wheelhouse. I'm doing what's in mine. Um, there are things like the IV vitamin C treatments, but again, you can't just go to a clinic and go, Hey, I want IV vitamin C. It's got to be timed around your, your cancer treatments, your chemotherapy, because again, IV, IV vitamin C is a very powerful detoxifier. It strips out heavy metals and toxins. So if you're getting a chemotherapy treatment, it's gonna be like you didn't get one at all. Then there's that poor life after treatment support. And I say this because you get the, um, you're cured, have a nice life. You rang the bell, symbolic. Um, you go off with this, I say a false sense of cured um, and not knowing what to do to prevent this from coming back again because you didn't even know where it came from in most cases. There, there wasn't that deep dive into that information. So hormone-focused cancer care with a functional medicine perspective is not just if you have cancer. It also works great for if you've had cancer and you want to improve you know, yourself, because sometimes chemotherapy can cause damage to the nerves. We have treatments for that. Um, we can help to replenish the damage that's been done and repair it. Uh, so a, a lot of things that go into it, I don't want to go down that because we're just talking about breasts today, but I, I don't want you to have a false sense of cure because it can always come back if the circumstances are right. Now we don't know everything about cancer, not at all, but there is a lot that we do know. First of all, this is where I'm going to go through this and help you to understand this. Um, Cancer is a genetic disease. You can change your genetics. Knowing your genetic risk helps you to guide your management, but it doesn't change the things that we're going to do in hormone-focused cancer care. Cancer is a systemic disease. That's metastasis. You don't have just breast cancer. You don't have just ovarian cancer. The cancer cell, your blood goes everywhere. Your lymphatic system goes everywhere. Your immune system is made to look and, and see when something isn't right and try to attack it to get clear from the system. Your immune system goes throughout your entire body. So cancer is a systemic disease because those cells can travel anywhere your blood and lymphatic system travel. Cancer is a mitochondrial disease. So supporting the mitochondria is critical. 
And mitochondria, this is that powerhouse of every cell. It controls the replication of cells. So we have new cells being made all the time. So if your mitochondria aren't working right, then what happens is when those cells are being made, the cancer cell, the damaged one, it makes a whole bunch more damaged cells instead of making um, healthy ones. So that's why we need to work to starve out those cancer cells and fix those mitochondria so that we're fixing the cells. And that's, that's a short-term thing. This is why you're going through cancer treatment that we help with that kind of mitochondrial diet. Um, and then cancer is a metabolic disease. So metabolism is profoundly affected by multiple hormones, um, including insulin, estrogen, it ha all has to do with your metabolism. And I told you about the leptin and the adiponectins, those things that go with, uh, with adipose tissue. Um, so we have to focus on metabolism. So if you have diabetes, you're overweight, you are insulin resistant, whatever the terminology is, um, all of these things hand in hand, you're increasing your risk of cancer. Cancer requires a lot of energy. So nutrition is so important. And if I'm telling you not to eat a lot of sugar because you don't want your insulin levels to go up, you want your metabolism to be on point, um, you don't want to starve yourself. You're like, what the heck am I supposed to eat anyway? Um, you have to have things that have nutrients in them because those mitochondria need certain vitamins and minerals. So we work to get all of those things into place the right way. Toxins overload the body and damage cells. Toxins are everywhere. We talked about that and how you process those and eliminate those is the important factors in cancer. Inflammation fuels the spread of cancer. I think we definitely hit this one. Um, I did What I didn't mention on inflammation was chronic infections like Lyme disease, Epstein-Barr, HPV. All those are infections as viral overload um, can cause inflammation. And then the lack of sleep. So the other thing we know about cancer is it doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care about your status, your age, or your plans. It's not going to stop for you. It's not going to wait for you. It doesn't care how much money you have or do not have. Cancer cancer will strike when, the, when everything is right. But there is hope. And so all of this with Cancer Talk was not to diminish your hope, but to give you more. Hormone-focused cancer care is where our hope is. The functional approach is to identify the problem, protect you from damage from your chemo treatments if you go through those and radiation, repair damage that's already been done, repair a damaged immune system, which is part of cancer, uh, rebalance and rebuild. That is what the functional approach is all about. Cancer defined for the functional focused cancer care purposes. This is my own definition. So I think that it pretty much puts everything together for cancer, and then I'm going to go through each step of this for you so that you understand it and how we use this definition to treat cancer from a functional approach. And when I say treat, that synergistic approach, the synergistic treatment, and the thing that's also going to keep you from having a recurrence of cancer um, and to do better with any type of um, conventional treatments that you're going to do. So cancer is lifelong. It's genetically predisposed metabolic disease of the mitochondria that requires a lot of energy resulting from an immune system that has been broken by toxic exposures and lack of nutrition fueled by inflammation, which is rapidly on the rise, targeting estrogen dependent reproductive organs and the number one cause of death in the United States. Now that's a lot, but I'm gonna break that down. Cancer is lifelong. There is no cure. That is because you are always at risk for recurrence. For this reason, we identify the risk factors that can be changed and learn a lifestyle that can last a lifetime. That lifestyle change lasts your entire life to help prevent you from developing a cancer. Genetically predisposed. So know your background, know your family history. We can do some genetic testing. Um, usually your oncologist will do that, the BRCA1, 2, all those genetic markers. Um, things though that I would do that they don't typically do are things like MTHFR gene mutation to make sure that you are able to process and filter out toxins from your body. Um, and I won't go into all of them, but there's other genetic things that help to balance your treatment. Um, this is where you get to change the future because you can change genetics. And if we do this now, we're we're heading into this new era, but we can also change this for our next generation, for our children and their children. A metabolic disease. So central to metabolic diseases, that's diabetes, obesity. So insulin, inflammation, and obesity. That is all a metabolic dysfunction. 
So we manage all of those things that we, so we can change the course. Um, then we do that with nutrition, activity, stress reduction, and it is not as hard as what you might think. And then there's those mitochondria. So those powerhouse of the cells, that is the core of functional medicine focused cancer care is managing those mitochondria. I don't make you go through all the science of it. Uh, that's my job. I just tell you how to make it happen. Um, they are very specific. They have very specific cofactors and things and nutrients uh, that have to be there to make them work correctly. And they run very well without glucose, if that's a hint to you. Um, but I doesn't, don't want anybody starving because if you do this crazy fad diet of stuff, um, you don't take this and, and try to turn it into that because you're going to, you're not going to starve out because you're not going to have the cofactors. Anyway, energy comes from nutrition. Cancer requires a lot of energy. So real food with real nutrients, not that processed stuff. You have to eat with intention and purpose. You can't just eat to eat. You need to get your energy from lean proteins, healthy fats, and complex carbohydrates that have the right nutrition and the fiber in them that are going to help to balance those estrogens. That's why I started with all that stuff I talked about in the beginning. It makes this make more sense. So then it results from a broken immune system. Um, so this immune system is our defense system. It's like our, our security guard. And if it's broke or weak from things like those viruses or inflammation or it's on overload because of all the processed foods and the toxins that it's trying to sort through, that's how it misses some of these cancer cells. And so when it misses the cancer cell, they get to turn over and replicate really fast. And so one little damaged cell that becomes a whole bunch of damaged cells, and then that's what a tumor is. So we need to fix that immune system so that the tumor doesn't take over and, and the, the immune system can find it and, and get rid of it. So those toxic exposures cause the inflammation, break down that immune system. And those are those plastics, certain metals, preservatives, makeup, pollution, pesticides. So many things are toxic to us right now. That's uh, that EWG. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will post it on Marsha Jones and be uh, our, my Facebook page for you. Um, so the body is very well equipped to eliminate toxins. Um, and it determines, it's just how how many of them we have and if we eliminate them how stressed the body is as to how well it eliminates toxins some people aren't able to do it other people do it better um there's all these little genetic things to do with that and that's part of what we focus on in functional medicine uh food and nutrition so a lack of nutrition is part of what causes cancer um and it's also part of how we fix cancer um or protect and defend and rebuild uh, because you have to have these nutrients and chemicals. They're phytonutrients, phytochemicals, phytoestrogens. Phyto just means comes from a plant. Um, so the actual nutrition that we need that helps to defend and repair and decrease inflammation and fight cancer can be found in our food. Uh, the inflammatory part, uh, gas on the fire. We beat this one to death, I think. Um, an inflamed body cell mutates uh, and a tumor growth then happens and it's like fuel on the fire. That tumor just grows out of control. Um, but it also increases your risk for blood clots. Uh, so we don't want blood clotting. Uh, so things that cause inflammation, stress, poor sleep, chronic infections, toxins, poor gut health, um, and increased, all those increased inflammation. So cancer is rapidly on the rise. An estimated 2 million people will be diagnosed with cancer this year. Breast cancer is the number one diagnosed cancer. Uh, and each year, nearly 42,000 women uh, die of breast cancer. That's not even the diagnosed ones. Those are the ones that die, making it the leading, leading cause of cancer death in the United States for women. Um, that's that's sad. And it's it's growing. That's what's even worse. I remember 90% are preventable. So um, cancer is targeting estrogen-dependent reproductive organs right now, and we discussed the estrogen imbalance and the risk for that. So correcting that imbalance is critical, and that's where testing, that's where the Dutch test comes in. Um, and again, I said the number one cause of death in the United States. So we are in a new era in cancer care. It's here, it's begun, and we have to take action. Uh, and that's where functional medicine comes in. Um, this is what I call synergy in cancer care, not a replacement for cancer care, support and protect the body. So this is the wheel, the functional medicine wheel, stress, gut health, emotional uh, support, detox, mental exercise, sleep, relationships, spiritual supplements, nutrition, all of these things we have to bring together in cancer care. And that's what we do with functional medicine. I'm actually writing a book, by the way. Um, I keep saying it's going to be out and I just keep revising it, um, but it's going to cover um, the hormones of cancer. I call, uh, so up, up in the air on the 
the title of it, if it's going to be the hormone connection to cancer or the hormones of cancer, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, that's not what's stopping me, but so uh, in functional medicine, it focuses on you, makes you who you are, um, and what's causing that imbalance so we can correct the imbalance within your life. And functional medicine goes beyond the standard labs. Even if we do have standard labs, we look at them differently because with standard labs, you'll see that there's this curve and it'll tell you the range and your range could go from say two to 10. Well, that just means that a hundred thousand people that were tested somewhere between two and 10 is where they landed. Well, I would want to be more towards the middle of that or the optimal instead of just being somewhere in the middle of this great big wide range. And that's what we do with functional medicine is we get you in that, that good range. Uh, so we dig a little deeper. We ask a little bit more information and we look at it from a different perspective. Like a lot of people aren't going to ask you about how many antibiotics you're on and how your bowels are moving and, um, you know, how are your pregnancies? Uh, how do you sleep at night? Those kind of things, because they all actually might make a difference. So this is the new approach to uh, cancer care, the functional approach. Identify, protect, repair, rebalance those hormones and rebuild. That is part of my program. I have a cancer, a hormone cancer connection uh, program that helps to um, manage all of these things. The 21 ways to boost the immune system to prevent cancer. So uh, um, as much as I talked about, and I talked about a lot and still haven't covered everything, um, I probably overwhelmed you, have your head spinning from a different direction now. But this is a guide it's, that you can download for free. It is the 21 ways to boost your immune system to prevent cancer. Um, has a little bit of information in there about my hubby and the journey that we went on and uh, what to do and what functional medicine is. You find that at MarciaJonesMP.com backslash cancer hyphen prevention hyphen guide. You got to put those little, little hyphen dashes in there or it will not pull it up. Thank you so much for taking your time to listen to me. I do hope that this was helpful for you um, because I enjoy this. I really enjoy this. And uh, like I said, MarciaJonesMP.com is where you find me. If I can be of any help to you, uh, please subscribe to the newsletter so that you get the information about these webinars when they're going to be released. I'm going to do one uh, on obesity management and cancer and what it does and go a little deeper into that on some of the other things that we do. Um, try not to be so uh, talkative for you, but I just, there's so much that needs to be done and said, and I am passionate about it, obviously. So you guys take care. Thank you for spending your day with me and um, blessings and health for you. And wherever your cancer journey is, I will say a prayer for you.